One of the first things I wanted to do here is actually get this cage riveted to the fuselage. And since I'm using steel rivets on aluminum, I wanted a little bit of primer under the rivets. So I'm just shooting some quick drying primer here before I rivet it. Next item on the agenda is to get the panel in the center console primed and painted. Obviously, I already have it primed. Now I'm shooting my same kind of semi-gloss green that I use for the interior on the panel and this here center section. It looks very, very nice. I'm pretty happy with how it came out. Now, the next thing is I wanted to get the center section side panels painted. So I took this foam here and I'm putting some nails in here. And I'm doing that because I want to hold the panel away from the pink foam so that I can get, not behind it, but so that I can clearly get to all of the edges so that I can make sure I get paint on the edges of these parts. Now this was a few days or so after I painted the panel in the center console. So I just mixed up some more of the paint and here you can see I'm painting these side pieces. And I'm starting with the edges. Like I said, I wanna make sure I get the edges because all of the edges will be visible. All of these parts I spray two coats on. And the first coat is just a thin base coat. I also wanted to get my baggage doors painted. I had them primed a long time ago and I'm finally getting around to painting them. You can see the jig that I had to build just to hold them to rotate them and paint them all at once. <laughs> and I'm using this little wire in the hole to be able to move them so I can get to the front and back uh, at the same time. Here's what that baggage door looks like installed in the airplane. It looks pretty nice and it works really well. Now the only problem is this airplane is so big and tall that the door is actually hard to reach. This is what I'd have to do to stand on the ground to reach back there and open it. I can reach it, but barely. To open this, I just have one of these butterfly quarter turn things. And it's, this thing actually isn't locked in there yet, but it, this, there's a little clip that goes on the back that holds this to the door. But that's it. You can open the door like that, and you can put something like a headset in there. Obviously, this isn't meant for a lot of weight or a lot of items, but something like a spare headset when I'm not flying with a passenger fits perfectly in there. And then to close it, we just close it, turn it a quarter turn, and it's latched. Pretty cool. Here's what that side panel looks like installed in the airplane. I went to Ace Hardware and got some black screws with some black plastic washers to put under them. I didn't have the right size screws for the bottom, so uh, I have to get some screws. Uh, but that's what it looks like for now. I think it looks really cool in there. Obviously, I kept this side open so that I can run and clamp wires in there. One of the other things I have to do yet is there's a little bracket that goes on the top here that holds the top in place. Uh, so I have to make that yet. But I'm really happy with this. I think it looks uh, really nice. I'm glad I did decide to go with gray. I mean, green instead of gray. Uh, I just. I just like it better. I think it looks pretty cool. Now, if you guys remember in episode 43, I made a new glare shield for this Super Duty. I had to make a new glare shield because the holes didn't line up. The holes in the original panel or original glare shield didn't line up with either the firewall or the panel. I can't remember. But I happened to have a whole roll of the exact same aluminum, same thickness and everything. So I just decided to make a new one to where I could custom drill my own holes and make it fit. But I just ran into another problem with that glare shield. All right, when I built my original or my custom glare shield here, I had the frame on here, of course, because that's what holds the panel and everything together. And this part of the frame was actually pushing the, the, the firewall a little bit forward, which I didn't know at the time. It was only after I put my engine mount on that when the engine mount sits you know, against the firewall, this part pushed this firewall back aft about a quarter of an inch. So now on all of my firewall holes, they were about a quarter of an inch off. In fact, the holes in the glare shield were about right on the edge of the firewall. Um, so what I'd recommend, if you guys are building any of the 750s, you might want to have your engine mount and frame all you know finished and bolted together here before you do work on your glare shield 
because when these two meet here, it may or may not move the top of your firewall slightly. So since these holes didn't line up now on my new glare shield, uh, I still have extra material. So I just decided to make a whole nother glare shield to where I can match drill all of the holes uh, except these ones here. In fact, the first three on both sides still lined up perfect. It was just about here uh, going all the way around that it was back a little bit so they're off. So these holes on the, the new uh, glare shield, I just won't drill. And then once I put the glare shield on here, I'll match drill these holes. So I've already got this glare shield almost done. I did this yesterday, but let me show you how I did it. It's nice that when you buy sheet aluminum, it comes with this plastic protective covering, but it's hard to peel off. It kind of takes a while. So I laid the, the old glare shield on top of my aluminum and it actually barely fit. But as you can see here, it, it all fits on here enough to make a new one. So once I had it in position, obviously I just took a little fine tip Sharpie and I traced all the way around the perimeter. I'm cutting this out with a pair of shears, but I'm cutting it about a half an inch away from the actual line because I want to cut it with a bandsaw because it gets a nicer edge or, or a cleaner cut. Here's my setup for how I'm going to cut this out. I just have my bandsaw here and I have my shop vac connected here just to collect as many of the little metal shavings as I can. So. I'll just hold that. You kind of need long arms to do it this way, but uh, I'll show you how I do it. And naturally, I had to slice my finger. Then I got smart and put on a pair of gloves. Now it's just time to use some elbow grease with a file and clean up all of the edges. After the edges are all nice and smooth with a file and sandpaper, we just go through and match drill all of the holes. I marked off the holes that I didn't want to match drill, and those are the holes that go on the firewall. Like I said, I'll drill those again once this is on the airplane. Here's the new glare shield. You can see it's pretty much all match drilled. Notice I drilled the couple holes here that go on the firewall that actually fit, but none of these other holes are drilled. I can do those once it's on the airplane. The parts that aren't finished is this section right here, and you can see this corner here. Now I haven't finished that yet because I use this bit right here, if my camera will focus on that, in a Dremel. And it's really nice for just going around and carving out this edge. But I did notice with these, they're, they work really, really well, but they dull out fairly quickly. So I was working on this last night and this just wasn't cutting anymore. It was too dull. Uh, so I called it a night. Today I went to Home Depot and I bought more of these bits. They come two in a pack and I think it was like 10 or $11. And when I was at Home Depot, I finally bought something I've been wanting to buy for a while. And that is a cordless Dremel. I'm not sure how well they work. I imagine it works pretty well, but there's so many times I use my Dremel and I need it in a place where the, the cord doesn't reach. So I have to go get an extension cord and, and plug it in. And I always thought this would be really handy. So I'm gonna open this up, charge it, and uh, we'll use it on here to finish up this panel. This little cordless Dremel is $50 at Home Depot. They do have a, a bigger, more expensive version, but I think this will work fine for me. Comes with a Dremel, a little pack of accessories, probably a charge cord, some manuals, and then of course I did buy these little uh, grinder bits separately. So we'll see how this works. Well, like I figured, that Dremel didn't come charged, so I do need to charge it, but that's okay. I actually have to get to work tomorrow, so I'm going to call it a day here. 
But let me give you an idea of what's coming up here uh, after Thanksgiving. I have a really good schedule for December. In fact, I have 21 days off in December. And other than a few days over Christmas where I plan on going home, I'm gonna spend all of that time in the hangar getting things done. Uh, I really wanna get moving on here. What I'm gonna to try to do is put out a video almost every day that I'm in a hangar if I can. And kind of the reason I wanna do that is to make sure that I'm using my time efficiently and I'm not wasting too much time during the day surfing the web or taking naps or whatever else I do. I really wanna focus on this, get things done. There'll be shorter, quicker videos, but I'll just keep you guys updated on what I'm doing. I did send my panel off to Aircraft Specialty today to have it uh, silk screen labeled. That will take a couple weeks to do. Once I get that back in, uh, in the airplane, maybe sometime in December, it might be January, but then I can really focus on that wiring uh, and start actually permanently mounting the switches and all that kind of stuff. So we'll start wiring up some of the uh, Aero LED lights. I'll show you how to make some of the connectors, how to work with shielded cable. I know a lot of you guys were asking me um, how I do it. There's a lot of different techniques you can do. In fact, you can search on YouTube um, a lot of that stuff, but I'll show you how I do it. I've been doing it for a while and it, I have my methods, I guess, that work well for me. So all of that stuff is coming up. So I hope you guys will stick around, subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And if you don't mind, give this video a thumbs up because it does help my channel to grow. All right, see you on the next video. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Bye -bye.